Hello, this is John N5ID. I apologize for all the glare on the screen. My shack is in the sunroom and I just get a lot of glare from the sun in here, but I think you can see this well enough as we go into this in-depth CW video to show you some of the great features of this little recent RS918 on CW. Right now I'm on a good strong station. At least I was. Let me turn the volume up. Now one thing you'll notice is this little bar right above DSP. That is what we're going to term as your zero beat bar and what you want to watch is that little yellow marker and as long as it's close to the middle of the uh, graph you're pretty much on the frequency now what you can also do to tell when you're on the frequency you can turn the encoder on the decoder on in the menu and this transmit light will light up when you're zero beated on a CW signal. Let me show you how to do that. We go into the menu, we open up CW settings by using the RIT knob, then we use the RF knob to go down to CW decoder enable, and when I enable that, you will see that the light illuminates when we're on the signal. When I when I get off the signal, the light goes out. And when I get back on the signal, the light comes on. And that's another way you can tell when you're zero beaded. I generally do not run the decoder. I'm going to turn that back off and hide that menu for just a, a moment. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch over to my dummy load in case I decide to transmit. I do not want to bother anyone and I'll show you some of the other settings that you will need for CW. We'll go back into the CW mode settings. We'll open that up with the RIT knob. Here's where you change your CW keyer. If you want a straight key, you just turn to straight key. I normally run iambic B. Here's your CW speed. Really there's no need to change the CW speed in this menu because if you look under RIT, you have words per minute and all you have to do is hit the RIT button. Actually, it won't let me do that while I'm in the menu. Hit the RIT button and highlight words per minute and then you simply change your keyer speed by turning the RIT knob and your side tone gain, if you'll notice under AFG, you just highlight that and you can change your side tone volume level by using the AF button. Now let's go back into the menu. Let's go back into the CW menu. Most of this you're not going to need to change. For instance, your CW keyer weight, you can leave that at default. Uh, I would recommend leaving the side tone frequency pitch offset at 750 and I'll explain that when we get into the filters in just a moment. Here's your break-in delay. I'll set mine at 200 milliseconds. Of course you'll have to set that to uh, whatever is your preference and I like using the upper sideband on CW and so that's the way I have mine set and uh, you'll have to turn the show CW LED on if you want the LED to illuminate when you turn the decoder on. And we're going to close this menu out. And another neat feature of this radio is the filters uh, that you can set up. And to set the filters up, you simply go into the filter selection and the first set of uh, options deal with sideband. I'll save that for a later video. Here's your CW filters and this is why it's important to leave your pitch at 750 Hertz. If you'll notice mine is set at 300 Hertz bandwidth on a 750 Hertz frequency or pitch and 500 Hertz on a 750 Hertz pitch. Now you can change these. They are customizable. The problem is 
You can do 300 and 700 hertz, 300 and 650 hertz. Uh, you can do 300 and 800 hertz. So you can customize those. But if you want to do the 500 hertz, 700 hertz is not available. Only 650, 750, and 850. And I happen to like the 750 hertz tone well enough that I just left that at default. And then I also set up a wider filter of 1.6 as a bandpass filter. Now I'm going to go back up and hide this menu. And to get to your CW filters, it's really simple. You just hit the BW button and it will scroll through your various filters. And the filters work really, really well. Another thing that works well on this radio, let's exit out of this menu and let's go back to the antenna and see if we can find a good signal. Oh, I'm changing the side tone gain. I forgot to highlight the AF gain. Let's turn that back up. Now I have a touch screen uh, on this particular model. If you don't have a touch screen, you can hit the DSP button to get to the peak filter. You just keep hitting it until the peak filter is highlighted and now it's on. That peak filter is a really nice, nice feature. It pulls signals out of the mud and the noise will melt right away. I'm going to turn that back off. But what I like to do is just use my stylus and I can hit the DSP and then you see the peak and I can hit that and turn it on or I can turn everything back off and close that menu out. Uh, the peak filter works really, really well, and uh, I have used it several times when I could just barely hear a station in there, and again, it pulls that uh, station right out of the noise, and the noise melts away. Another neat feature of the recent RS918 is the memory keyer. And to get to the memory cure, before I do the memory cure, I do want to show you one thing. This snap button under F2 or over F2, if I hold that down, that will change my meter, ALC and audio and SWR. But if you don't hold that button down and just momentarily press it, supposedly, that is a automatic zero in feature. It does not work very well. I have not got it to zero in on a signal since I've been trying it. It may work for others and I've got the latest firmware, but it just has not worked well for me when I've tried to zero in. But the, to get to the memory keyer, you simply depress the AF button and hold it down. And you'll see on the bottom, that uh, I have some pre-record or some recorded messages already put in calling CQ and QRL. It's very simple to use. If if I just press it, it's going to send whatever I have recorded on that particular channel. I am on the dummy load. Now to record it, it's very simple. You just hold the button down until it says record. And then you press it again after you use your keyer to record the message. Or if I want to put QRL back in there, I hold it down. Well, I messed up. Uh, I would do that on the video. I'm usually pretty, pretty sure-fisted, but making the video, you would know I would mess up. But that's a great feature. You can uh, record CQ, QRL, your, uh, your call sign, or whatever you want to put into the memory keyer. Uh, that's some of the features that I use on this radio. I really like this radio for the price. I know I say it on every video that I make, but my goodness, you can pick these up 
new in the 300 to 350 dollar range and you can pick them up on the used market in the two to 250 dollar range and for that price with all that comes with it it's pretty amazing i, I like the touch screen if i see a signal and i don't want to use the vfo encoder i just simply touch on the screen to get close of course turn the volume up and then use the encoder to zero beat it great great little radio for the price uh, i've owned several chinese radios including the Zygu x6100 now this one does not have a built-in battery or even the provisions for it on this model does not have a built-in tuner but i can tell you the receiver is really good and it's really good on transmit audio on both sideband and cw if you enjoyed the video i would ask that you subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions about this little radio don't hesitate to contact me on my qrz address i hope you have a wonderful day thank you and god bless